Hey, what's up you guys? I'm with my friend Chris again, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a topic that was actually requested by one of the fans. Ban lists versus power creep. And which one does a better job of killing a deck off? So, um, sort of to preface the discussion, you know, ban lists oftentimes kill decks. They limit stuff, they ban stuff. But power creep can also, you know, hurt a deck too. You know, if a deck just, if newer cards come out that are just better and make the old deck irrelevant, then the deck can die that way. So we'll just give our thoughts on it. Um, what do you think? Which one do you think does better? Um, I think power creep. Um, power creep is the most effective. Um, it's not, I'm not gonna say it's more effective, but it's the most effective. And um, what I mean by that is, um, okay, you're gonna get more sets consistent. Okay, throughout the year, you're gonna get more sets that come out and release newer cards mm -hmm. than you get ban lists. Even though we get a ban list every three, every three I, months. Yeah, now. I see what you're saying, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, Power Creek will have to be effective. And you just, I mean, if you pay attention to just Yu-Gi-Oh in general, um, when people talk about Yu-Gi-Oh, they um, somebody always says, Oh, well, wait till this card comes out. When this card comes out, I'm gonna yeah, do this. And, that's true. You know, and not, oh, wait till the ban list. Like, you you hear, wait till this card comes out more than you hear. Wait for the ban oh, list. Oh, wait for the ban list. Because, and the thing about it is, like, the ban list is totally unknown. Yeah, like, that is true. It'll throw you for a loop every time. But. But you can be sure that new cards. Yeah, will power creep. And it's, except, like, you know, we get exclusives. Like, I think maybe later. part of the power creep equation could be that, not necessarily that it's power creep, but just because these cards are newer, yeah. people choose to play them. Like, my the example I always give is, like, you know, excluding Blaster, of course. Fire Fists have, like, everything at three. Like, remember, yeah. like, Spirit came out and it got, like, limited immediately. And then yeah. there was a time it when, like, Wolf been Park. Too, it would have been too crazy. Yeah, right, like, Wolf Park went to one, then it went to two, and it went to. Yeah. Like, and like you know, people are like, "Oh, Tinky needs to." Tinky with the two. Yeah, and like, Tinky wants <laughs> to do all that stuff. So like, but have you noticed all those cards hit three now? Mm -hmm. And Firefish still aren't relevant. And you know, maybe that's partly because new stuff comes out and people are just more drawn to you yeah. know, like, oh, new cards. You know, I should just play them because they're new. And so maybe that could be it. But I think that it's really, it really says something when a deck has all of its cards not limited or anything. Same with like Bujins. Yeah. You know, same with Bujin, same with, you know, Medolce, like, when they were supposed to be, like, good. They have all their cards, but new stuff is just better. It has more effects. It has, like, you know, Shadals and, like, Burning Abyss and the Cross just do more, faster, more consistently. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, do you think there are situations where the ban list has done a better job than Power Creep, though? Of, of course. Um, like, even when they, um, like, right around the time they switch from, um, Right around the time they switched to the three month ban yeah, list, yeah. Um, like Yu Gi Oh took a big hit and it turned the game around completely. I'm like, like, I saw that. I, I saw the, I saw the game turn around because the game was on its way out the door, in a lot of people's opinion. Like a lot of a lot of the big, bigger Yu Gi Oh players were quitting. Yeah. Like I would see a lot of videos on on YouTube when a lot of players were talking about they're quitting, they're going to this game, but they're just quitting all together. But now like. When Konami, I mean, when Konami switched everything around and they start, they stopped banning um, a lot of cards. Basically, yeah. like a lot of times now, if a card is banned, it's 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 strictly it's strictly off the strength that 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 the card is too good. Yeah, I do know <laughs> Konami know? does a little bit less like banning. It's not like they're actually trying to like thin out the ban list. Yeah, like it sometimes feels like they're because you know they're like doing the Rata stuff or yeah. whatever. So sometimes it feels like, you know, okay, maybe the idea is we'll just creep things out. We'll just release new stuff and it'll just like get rid of the old stuff in players' heads and we don't have to use the ban list except for emergencies. I think one of the big emergencies I always think of is like Infernities. Yeah. That was definitely one of those situations where like they had a tough time creeping it out. Like they had a horrible time creeping it out because the deck... It just stayed... The deck stayed you know, relevant. And it kept adapting. Like exactly, it was like it was never a time when the deck wasn't good. Yeah, and it like, just kept like until they you know hit. Yeah, they had barrier. to neuter it. They had yeah, to like, like neuter until it. They hit the barrier, the arch thing. Like, I mean, because even when they first hit barrier, they were like, okay, well that's the end of it. And yeah. they hit barrier to one, and it still did stuff. Yeah. So they had to just be like, no, arch okay. to one, no more. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like 
no Dark Knight was a problem because like it searched out the whole deck. Yeah, it searched everything. It searched out the whole deck, and it was at one. I mean, and, it was at three. And people realized you didn't even need like. I mean, you could still use your barrier, but like things like Raigeki break, things like Infernity break, and like yeah. Wiretap did pretty much just as well a job. And so, it yeah. I mean, I think that in special cases, the ban list is obviously the more effective one. Yeah, like if you're, this is way, if everything in your deck is banned and limited, yeah. then of course your deck's dead. But sometimes it feels like power creep actually does a more like slow, toxic draining a deck exactly. like a power. Where exactly because you're still gonna have you still gonna have some players that play those decks. They cling to them after yeah. the after the new stuff after new stuff comes out for other decks and the other decks are clearly better now. So, but you're still gonna have people that still play those and they still do well with them. Yeah. And it just like yeah, I it, think power creep is more effective still because like. You're gonna get more, like, just like I said in the beginning, you're gonna get more new cards than you get banned lists. And that's a good point. I agree with like, that. That's, like, when, at, at the end of the day, that's what it, it all comes down to the fact that what do you get the most? Like, banned lists, it, a, a lot of times, is, is a, it's They're it's unpredictable. Yeah. And, yeah. So, it, yeah. And, like, now, I mean, now it's like they're. They're completely unpredictable because, like, they'll just come, they'll come out of left field and give us like Rageki back, or they'll come out of left field and and throw us something like a heavy storm, just some stuff that we so, don't like, some stuff that we can't predict, you know. Like, so maybe, it, maybe, like, would you say it, that the ban list is the more, it's more effective at like killing a deck or like changing a format, yeah, but. It's because it's unpredictable and because you can be sure that new stuff will come out. It's kind of new stuff and power creep is a more like guaranteed, like it's more guaranteed. Yeah, to it's happen. more guaranteed to happen. And like ban lists are a little bit. And like then the same, like, and, and then the same, like, power creep, just in general, like, it. Power creep makes the game a little more interesting. Yeah, it keeps in things. Yeah, and I don't think Konami would always want to just, okay, we're going to yeah. ban stuff and not make anything more broken. Because exactly. newer cards are more interesting to play. Yeah, you know? and new, new interesting, and then they become, cool. like, they're interesting at first, and then they become the new broken. Mm -hmm. Because so many people play them, and so many people find ways to innovate newer cards into older decks or to, you know, newer decks. Yeah, so Power Creep doesn't, yeah, I can agree with that. Yeah. I think maybe Bandless is like potentially a better way to kill a deck. Yeah. But these it days is. it doesn't happen as often. It these is. These days like, it's just more of the creep. Like, Bandless is more uh, a waiting. I mean, I mean Bandless is more of a, okay, I see this is good, I'm going to kill it. Power Creep is more of a, more of, oh, we're going to release this because this is good now. Yeah. But in the future, we're going to give you this. And. It's gonna be better than this, so you play this. Yeah, it, it's, yeah, it's more deceptive, I think. And then in the case of Infernities, when it, I mean, when it's like, it's like, oh, the power creep didn't really help it. This deck is still fast as shit. This deck is still very effective. Oh, we got the ban list to fall back on, and just say, hey, here, we're gonna limit Archfiend, or, or, right. You know, I mean, like, I, I'm trying to think of another case where that, what that, what that happened. I mean, I think like uh, one of the bigger ones. Probably just like plant sinker when they like slaughtered yeah. that. They like they only they only slaughter and this kinda gets off in a bit of a tangent, so I'll be quick. But they kind of only like slaughter like player made decks. Yes. Like player made decks, because like the players designed it, mm -hmm. like sometimes they can be potentially more broken and gets in the way of what Konami wants. It does. And so like that those are the ones they like slice and dice. Like, you know, in, I mean I wouldn't say Infernities were like a player made deck, but players kept evolving it. But also like Plant Synchro is a good example. And to some degree hat. Yeah. And so like they, they don't really like those player made ideas and so that those are the ones they usually hit whereas like the archetypes they can just be like oh we'll make an archetype that's better than this archetype and yeah. there's nothing the players yeah. can do about it so yeah but, hat, yeah had it hat was a good a yeah. good example with them hitting moral moral tech yeah things like um, that and power creep also i guess yeah kind of made trap tricks and hands less uh, yeah and it's, just, it's, it's like um it's a bit of both it's like power exactly. creep and ban list. Like they exactly. work together. They're evil. Yeah, they they, they work Partners together like crime. perfectly. And even look at tour guide. Like she's been up and down though. Tour guide's been up and down, but like the way they deal with it was like it was never a, it was never a time where tour guide at three was a bad, like where it wasn't a good thing to have. Yeah. But now it's like tour guide at three is 
too deadly to have. So we yeah. got the band list to fall back on, which is why they hit it on the last band list. So that's one of those situations where yeah, the band list like, has a lot more control over. Yeah, it. like it's all about it's it's all about situation. It's all about situation when it comes to what decks are good and what decks yeah. Put like this: what decks they want to be good, mm -hmm. and the decks that are actually just good. I think they just work together. Yeah, they, they, like, they work together. They, they like they use a little bit of ban list when they have to, yeah. and they use a little bit of character. Creep. It's gonna, it's all evil. Yeah, but even it, I mean, and, and and the thing about I mean, and and the reason you probably don't hear power creep as much is because a lot of people, uh, it's accepted. A lot, a lot of casual players might not even know the term. They don't even know the term. Power and I always feel really bad when like, the casual players don't get yeah, like why like, they're. You old. see, I you see, I actually like I knew what it was. I just I wasn't sure I know, what the term just, was called. I think it's sad. <laughs> like the like the older players are like, why doesn't my like gladiator be stack keep yeah, up? Like, it's it's crept out. Like it's <laughs> yeah. still, it's it's still a great it's still a great deck. It's great against decks of its time. Yeah. But anyway, that's I guess another topic for another video. Yeah. Um, but. That's our stance on it. Uh, I think it's a bit of both. He thinks it's kind of more more power creep, you'd say? Yeah, I think it's more power creep. And I um, thought it was just an interesting topic. Again, um, fans suggested it, so hope you're happy. Leave your comments. What do you think? Uh, is it more ban Is it more power creep? Is it both? Is it just a play? Is it all in our heads? Maybe, I don't know. Um, and Thumbs up if you liked it. Also remember that I am doing monthly giveaways. This month you can win one of three Yu-Gi-Oh! Chibi playmats. So there's like the Yu-Gi, the Kaiba, and the Joey one. And uh, you can win one of them. Link in the description for how to enter. You just have to subscribe to this channel and you can get additional entries by following me on Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! And we'll catch you guys later.